I'm looking for exciting. I'm looking for flashy. I'm looking for somebody who has that uh, that thing. What is that thing? Sean O'Malley is that thing. He's just the type of guy you want to see fight. And if you see him in the octagon once, you'll remember him. His performance against Jose Quinones is a prime example of that phenomenon. The fight starts. It's been more than two years since O'Malley has set foot in the octagon. Right away, Sean perfectly times a front kick to the body and knocks Quinones off balance. The way he analyzes positions when he has the time is quite stunning. He seems to be in total control of his mind, of his fight. A few seconds later, O'Malley sees a leg kick coming from a mile away and he's like, really? But not in an overconfident manner, just in a controlled way. O'Malley is such a good outside fighter because of the way he uses his length, but also because of the way he uses his feints. Indeed, feinting is one of his best tools to control the distance, but of course, without exceptional movement, that would all be worthless. About a minute into the fight, Sean uses that outside movement to get away from Teko's blitzing attack. While moving back, he blocks the right hand with his left and throws his own right. The way he puts his guard up like that is very effective to block strikes even with small gloves. But most of the time, he prefers being totally out of range and like we established, feints constitute a big part of that. The reason why O'Malley's feints are so effective is simple. They force his opponents to make a choice. You basically have three options. Option number one, you overreact to the feint. That means flinching or moving back slightly. If you do that, you lose your rhythm. You can't dictate the pace. Yes, you might escape O'Malley's possible attack, but if it doesn't come, you'll be hesitant. And one thing is for sure, the range won't be yours. Option number two, you underreact to it. That means try not to let the feints affect you. You don't let the feints change your game plan. If you decide to do that, O'Malley will use it against you. He'll get in range with the feint and set you up for one of his numerous attacks. And finally, option number three. You try to counter the feint, not knowing if it is one or not. If it is indeed a feint, you might look a bit stupid when you hit some air. If it's not a feint, then you might have some success, but like we're gonna see in this next sequence, that success can be used against you. O'Malley does a feint to get in range and throws a jab. However, he gets caught moving in on the outside by a brutal leg kick followed by a right hook. So basically, Kinones reacted to the feint slash step in by throwing a leg kick immediately. O'Malley sees this as a tendency and is looking to exploit it. He throws the same feint to get inside waiting for Quinones to counter his movement, and he goes for the massive overhand. That's a fight ending shot if I've ever seen one. If Quinones would have went for the leg kick again, that would have been the end of the fight. The kick would have been checked, and the head would have been in an ideal position to be chopped off. So far, O'Malley's been moving impeccably on the outside, particularly when Teko puts pressure on him. Again, Quinones rushes in with the right hands, and one more time, O'Malley blocks with the left arm guard. But this time, something different happens. O'Malley's made a read, and he knows where Quinones is gonna be. He also knows that Teko anticipates him to keep moving on the outside, like he did a minute ago. With that info, Shigashan quickly plants his feet, goes from one side to the other in a flash, and stuns Quinones with the right hook counter behind the ear. Like a matador, O'Malley slides just out of the ball's reach and makes the beast look stupid. Like in the first 5 seconds of the fight, he assesses the situation calmly, in total control. He looks at Quinones like a hawk, and as soon as he realizes he's hurt, he jumps on him. But he storms in with a calculated approach, like he always does. I firmly believe that the first thing you need to throw when someone's hurt is not a punch, or a kick, but a feint because you never know how people are going to react when they're hurt. Sometimes they cover up, or they try to grab what they can, or they go for a desperate overhand. With a feint, you get the first instinctive reaction from your opponent, and then you'll have a better idea of how to put the finishing touches. Early in his career, Sean has already mastered that principle. He feints, and this is Teko's reaction. He covers up. Then, O'Malley can confidently start his next attack. Like any true MMA genius, the beginning of the strike 
starts with the same initial movement that corresponds with the previous feint. Is it a feint? Is it a strike? Teko wouldn't know. O'Malley hurts him with a beautiful head kick whipped around the guard. And then, he looks, he observes, he analyzes. The uppercut should be ideal to intercept the now panicking Kinones. The precision is as perfectly sound as Sugar's state of mind. Teko's last chance, a desperate takedown. But O'Malley is way ahead of him, and both of his hands are already blocking Teko's shoulders. Kinones can't drive into the legs because he can't reach them. Nothing is going his way. Everything O'Malley does turns to gold. He gets the first round finish. Two years of hard work condensed in two minutes. And even that doesn't change his laser-focused mindset. I feel calm. But I think some people get really excited because they're kind of surprised if they knock someone out. Um, I plan on knocking people out. Sean O'Malley might not be the scariest fighter you've ever seen physically, but for now, his mind seems absolutely rock solid, and his fighting style couldn't be more spectacular. I cannot wait to look at his progression through the murderous row that is the bantamweight division.